Welcome to Virch. I'm Dana Black, and this is The Table, a new, inclusive, and progressive Christian community in North County, San Diego. We're grateful that you've joined us today for our experience, and we're excited to continue this journey with you. For today's Virch, we're going to celebrate Christmas in July. Yes, you heard me right, Christmas in July. Reverend Chelsea and I are excited to share the Christmas story, which is relevant all year long. You'll also hear from our very talented musician, Talib, who will share an original piece that he wrote for the Christmas season. As we begin, I just want to take a minute to center ourselves in this space. I'm going to light this candle here, and I invite you, if you have a candle, you certainly can do so as well, to just remind us that Christ is with us during this time. Just let go of the noise and the distractions of the outside world. Be present with yourself. Be present with those that you may be sharing this space with. And most importantly, be present with God. I have found to really calm myself down, it's helpful for me to take just one or two deep cleansing breaths using a count of three. That helps from my mind to wander into other thoughts and ideas. So I invite you to do that with me now. Gently close your eyes and just inhale for one, two, three. Exhale for one, two, three. And once again, inhaling for one, two, three and exhaling for one, two, three. And with our eyes still gently closed, quietly inviting God into this time, saying, God, here I am. Please speak. Your servant is listening. Amen. Now you can gently open up your eyes And again, we thank you for being with us today, and we're excited to hear from Talib now. Please join me if you know this. Oh, you've come to bring peace, to be loved, to be nearer to us, and you've come. To bring light, to be light, to shine brighter in us, so oh, amen. You God with us, our deliverer, you are Savior. In your presence, we find our strength. Over everything, our redemption, God, with us. You are God, with us. Oh, you've come to be whole to this world for your honor. Take sin to bear shame and to conquer the grave of Holy, 
we are standing in your glory you are here you are holy we are standing in your glory you are here lord you are holy we are standing in your glory lord you're here you are holy we are standing in your glory Savior, in your presence we find our strength over everything, our redemption, God, with us, you are God, with us, Lord, you are God, with us. comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. The Birth of Jesus In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Here we are for Virch number three, and we are celebrating Christmas in July. So Chelsea, tell me, why Christmas in July? Yeah, and I have to be honest, I did not come up with Christmas in July. It is something that is celebrated in various Christmas uh, communities, but I thought, uh, let's jump in on some fun and celebrate Christmas in July. Um, I love Christmas. I, for one, I love the Christmas decorations. I love getting presents for people. We are still watching The Grinch in my household yes. even now today. I just love the Christmas season. Um, but even for me, I work in a church. I do feel that the Christmas season is somehow uh, divorced from the birth of Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, the scripture story of when God decided to enter into humanity. Um, those, those, they feel like two different things at times. Yeah, and as you're talking about, you know, just loving that moment and doing all those wonderful things, I'm just exhausted by it, yeah. right? I'm overwhelmed because when I know that the Christmas season's coming, I'm thinking of all my to-do list things, you know, get presents, get the lights up, get the tree, what parties are we going to? And it just, I feel overwhelmed and just exhausted by the entire experience. And then... I reflect that have I really spent time really embracing what the message is and that Christ comes to us at this time. Christ is born and um, I think I lose it. I, it's lost for me. Total, whether you like Christmas or not, uh, it, it might sound cheesy, but we forget the reason for the season. We really, <laughs> yeah. we get distracted, whether it's uh, an overwhelming distraction or an excited distraction. Uh, it, it's not often that we get time during that Christmas season in December mm -hmm. to stop and reflect on Emmanuel, mm -hmm. which means God with us. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, th I think it's important that in the midst of, of where we find ourselves now, uh, that we remember that God comes to us in the messiness of life. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to in the messiness of life then, and God still comes in the messiness of life now. I love that. And that's really the message that we're going to share today is that Emmanuel, God is with us mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. That's that's really the message here. And, and you know, Today, as we sit here, it's July 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, 2020 is a year that we're going to remember. It's a difficult yes. year. Difficult there are year. people without jobs, um, people that haven't seen their families, people that yeah. are just dealing with a laundry list of really um, depressing heavy. things, heavy and, heavy, and we're feeling a little bit of despair. I know that I am in the right. air. And 
how important it is to remember that God is, is with us. Yeah. And, and now I want to just kind of get into the Christmas story because that time period where Christ came into the world was also very messy. Right. It was heavy, but not everyone knows the, the, the Christmas story. So can you just tell us, go back and give us a Christmas story in your words? Yeah. The Christmas story, the the opening credits to the Christmas story, it starts even further back than um, the New Testament. If you look back on the Old Testament, you see uh, that the that the Jewish people have a tumultuous relationship yeah, with God, right. that there's a lot of ups and downs. There are times where they are worshiping God and they are, they are right with one another. Mm -hmm. And then there are times where they are at war with one another and worshiping idols. So they really mm -hmm. have this roller coaster of a relationship with God. Right. Um, so when the New Testament, when the scene opens, let's mm -hmm. say, uh, the Jewish people are living in an uh, oppressed society. So the Romans have come in and are now, they're heavily taxing them. They mm -hmm. are um, finding all different ways to kind of oppress the Jewish people. And right. so the Jewish people are in desperate hope of someone to come and save them. They want a warrior. They want a warrior. They want someone to come and wipe out the those that are oppressing them. They come and wipe out the bad guys. Right. I think that we want that now sometimes we yes. just we just hope that god will come and make all right with the world right and, um but that's not what happens yeah not <laughs> not in the way that they thought no. right they didn't get the warrior on a horse with a sword no they got a, a baby in a manger and so um to go back so so we have this this young uh woman named mary she's mm -hmm. about 13 or 14 years old mm -hmm. and she is betrothed or engaged to this guy named joseph and they find themselves uh, expecting a baby, right? And they're not married yet, so there's a little bit of tension there. Right. Um, and so they're thinking of what to do. And an angel or a voice comes to Mary and says, this is my son. This is God's son hmm. um, that's going to enter into humanity through you. Wow. Um, I I can't even imagine that. Right. <laughs> That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole other conversation, <laughs> right? And so um, th there's this young couple expecting a baby. Right. Uh, who is now, they found out, is uh, God's son. Right. <laughs> Just and, right. That's it. Godson. Yeah. And then on top of that, there is a decree that goes out that is calling all people back to their place of birth uh, to be counted for a census. Right. So they are now traveling while pregnant under uh, Roman oppression. Uh, and she's due any minute, right? right? Right. So they get to Bethlehem and there are people everywhere because of the census. Right. And there are limited places to stay. So they find themselves in a stable uh, surrounded by animals. Right. Which is definitely where I would want to give birth. Right. right? In a stable with some hay and some sheep. Not not in a hospital with nurses and yeah. doctors. Forget the birth plan. Right. I Forget mean, this the, is just something that has gone all right. away. That's right. <laughs> um, and so... Th there they are. They're in. The, they're surrounded by animals, and it's time to give birth to God's son, mm. um, Jesus, a baby, a baby. And so it's not the warrior th no. on, that's going to come wipe out the bad guys. And I love this. This is so Jesus, right? He begins his life in this countercultural, upside down way. Yeah. It's not the warrior. It's the baby. No. Um, and it's also not this romanticized version of the birth that we so often connect to Absolutely. and have grown up with. It's it's not that at all, which you've just described. Yeah. So that's an important thing to keep keep with us. Yeah. I mean, we like to picture the little preschoolers dressed as the sheep and yeah. the cows and Mary with her blue scarf. And uh, it just it didn't happen that way necessarily. No. It was a messy, troubling time period. Yeah. Just like today. Just like today. And, yeah. and, and how powerful is that, that God enters into that messy situation mm. and God enters still today in our messy situation. What a beautiful mm. imagery that is. Which just goes back to our theme, which is Emmanuel, God with us. Yeah. God with us all the time. So one of the other beautiful parts about the story, I think, um, w after Jesus is born, they put him in a manger, which is, mm. which is a feeding trough. Uh, not a, not the like thousand sheet count sheet, uh, bassinet that right. you would, uh, maybe purchase for the son of God. This is a hay filled eating trough. Right. Um, but what, what a cool imagery that, yeah. that the baby that Jesus has put into the feeding trough and later becomes, comes to be the bread of life. Right. Um, the substance that, that keeps us even today going. That's why we do communion. We break the bread uh, to give us fuel for the journey. Boy, the author of Luke really knew how to create imagery there for right, us, didn't he? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's I love beautiful. It. I mean, it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. It's the humbleness mm -hmm. uh, that we come to know Jesus to have and possess, right? So yeah. 
So, uh, so okay. So we have, you know, Jesus. We have the Christmas story. It's not what was expected. It was during a very difficult time. Um, he comes as a baby, uh, as a humble, helpless child, not as a warrior, and um, and, and it is here with us all the time. Comes into the messiness of life, mm-hmm. which is right now, which is two thousand plus years ago. So, what does this mean, God with us? Like, how, wh- how do we live that out? Because you know, again, we have so much going on in our world, in my life, in your life. Like, what is God with us? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think as we read the scriptures, we see examples of it all all of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, in the lectionary passage for this week, which is the suggested scripture mm-hmm. reading, um, we see God comes to us in a mu- as a mustard seed, something yeah. so small um, that just blossoms and grows big. Um, and then I was thinking about this. The, one of my favorite scriptures is talks about uh, Jesus is talking about the sheep and the goats, and he's saying, you know, when you gave food to those that are hungry, yeah. when yeah. you clothe the naked, um, you did that for me. So. So it's my reminder that we are God mm. uh, presence to one another, that we are the hands and feet of Jesus in this world, yeah. uh, that we remind one another that God is, in fact, present with us. Which is why being in community with one another, um, even if it has to be virtually or six feet apart, is just is so important because we are in this together, doing this together. Yeah. 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 And we're tangible beings. Like we need things that remind us because like you're saying, we have busy lives. We have a lot going on. Um, we need tangible reminders of of God's present with us. Yeah, and it reminded me, I did. I just recently did a study on Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation, which we won't get into what that is, but it was... a a critical figure in um, re- Protestant religion today, and this was back in the 1500s. And um, you know, he was he was isolated in a castle for about 10 months, and really didn't have any connection with the outside world, and really struggled to find where is God? Is God with me? What's the meaning? What am I supposed to be doing? And um, just went through depression, uh, which is not necessarily what you'd think of one of uh, the faith leaders of. of of the Protestant Reformation, and ultimately one day, and again, I'm not recommending anybody do this, but he got up and took a knife and carved into the table, I am, I was baptized, I am baptized. Um, And it was a reminder to him every day that God is with him, even during this difficult time of isolation, during this difficult time of where he was wrestling, struggling with his purpose, God is with him, God loves him, he is beloved. And it was just, it was meaningful for me and connects to this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how powerful that this pillar of the Christian faith, right. right, still needed to be reminded. Absolutely. And I know I know, I need to be reminded. I mean, I work in a church and I'm constantly trying to read scripture, and but I need reminded of that all the time as well. And it just, it, it just proves that we are tangible beings that need something to hold on to. Yeah. And so I was trying to think of like, how do we do yeah. this on a daily basis? What can we maybe suggest for, for other people to do? And um, in this time of COVID, we are washing our hands mm-hmm. A lot. Yeah, right. All the time. And so uh, maybe we haven't all been baptized, but we all have been lavished on by the love of God. So maybe when we're washing our hands for the 30th time that day, uh, we can just pause and just imagine that the water flowing over our hands is God's love pouring over us. Mm, And we just take that time to pause and just really soak that moment in hand sanitizer works as well yeah Yeah. (laughs) god is in the hand sanitizer as well but our tangible remind reminder of emmanuel emmanuel god God is with us us. yeah god with us yeah. yeah Well, this was great. I really appreciate um, this conversation and, and just taking time to connect to the Christmas story outside of all of the all of the, the chaos that comes with the Christmas season. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's 80 some degrees here and yet it's it's so relevant and so appropriate for right now. So I, I appreciate the time. Thanks. So. If you have more questions for us about the Christmas story or you just want to talk about uh, how this relates to your life um, or where this, what this could mean for you, we'd love for you to join us at our virtual happy hour. It takes place on Wednesday at 6 p.m. and you can find it on our Facebook page, our Instagram, or on our website, thetablesd.org. We look forward to connecting with you. You have a seat here.
Emmanuel, God with the worker and the employer. Emmanuel, God with the homeless, God with the landlord. Lead us to a better way. our hearts to unity, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with the fearful, God with the stranger, Emmanuel, God with my enemy, God with my brother, lead us to a better way, guide us to peace, lead our hearts to you. O oh, Prince of Peace, you are hope in our time of need. O oh, we rejoice in unity. God with the hopeless, God with the gleeful, Emmanuel, God with the healthy, God with the God with the whole earth, God with the whole